Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter. With us now from Washington is the Chairman Emeritus of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Representative Ileana ross and Republican from Florida. And Representative ross and thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Kathleen, and thanks for Newsmax. We love you guys. Thank you. Well, the House has made it clear that it will not take up the Senate immigration bill as not only a Cuban immigrant, but also a lawmaker from Florida, which has the third largest undocumented immigrant population in the country. Is this a wise move and how do you view the House's piecemeal approach? I think it is a wise move. Why? Because the Senate did its work, but the House is a completely different body. We need to craft our own bills and that's what Speaker Boehner has said all along, no matter what, if it's immigration, any topic. Why? Because Obamacare, that uh, abomination of a bill, ruined it for all big bills. Nobody wants to vote for these mammoth bills. That's what the Senate bill is you know, so many hundreds of pages. We say we're House is going to work its will. We're going to do a piecemeal approach, and that's the right way to do it. Some in the House don't want to take up an immigration bill at all. Is immigration reform doomed, or do you think that we'll really have a law this year? Well, Kathleen, I think those who say they don't want to do anything at all, I think that's accepting de facto amnesty because we have 11 and a half million people here who are not documented and what's going to happen? We're not sending them back uh, and, and uh, they're going to stay here. So if you say the system is not broke, we don't need to fix anything, we don't need to pass any new laws, what you're saying is uh, these uh, people who are here uh, without any legal papers, they can stay here. That's why what we want to do is a, a few things. Number one, secure the borders. Definitely, for sure, secure the borders. No play around, but really do it. Number two, we want to make sure that we can help those people who want to contribute to the greatness of, the, of America. We're not going uh, to legalize any criminals or anyone who's here to do ill to the United States. We want to help people who want to make this country even better. It's already the best country in the world. We can always improve. And what we want to do is do it in a safe and legal and methodical way. That's the House approach to immigration reform. And I prefer that we pass a bill so that we can fix the problems because it's definitely broken. Does the GOP have to pass immigration legislation or else risk losing Hispanic voters permanently? I don't think that we should look at this, uh, Kathleen, on a, by a political prism. It's not about whether we're going to win the White House or we're going to win Hispanic votes. It's about doing what is right. It's about enforcing our laws, having a safe and secure border, uh, making sure that we do it right. Remember, Ronald Reagan, whom we love, he said in 86, we will never have another immigration bill because we fixed the border. People say, we don't believe you guys. We, you promised that in 86. It didn't come true. So we really have to come true uh, uh, and do the right thing for the border to make sure that we don't repeat this again. That is a for sure. And I think that uh, we shouldn't uh, uh, look at immigration through a political prism. Uh, and uh, what we need to do, we are the party of realists. We don't overpromise. We overdeliver. That's what we need to do in this bill as well. Stop making all of these... Uh, uh, platitudes and promises. Remember when Obama and the Democrats uh, uh, owned the government, you could say, because they controlled the White House, the House, and the Senate. What did they do for immigration reform? Nada. Zilch. So you can't say the Republicans are this and the Democrats are that. Come on, there's, there's enough blame to go around. Let's switch gears real quickly and chat about foreign affairs. Cuba has come out and admitted that missile parts found hidden in a North Korean cargo ship last week were in fact from Cuba, claiming they were obsolete defensive armaments that were simply being sent to North Korea for repairs. How do you view this development and should the Obama administration take action here? Well, as always, the Obama administration is always late to the dance and they're very weak and they're so ineffective. Here it is days after this incredible discovery of violations of not one, not two, not three, but four UN Security Council resolutions. And has Secretary Kerry sent inspectors uh, down there to Panama to look at it from the US? No. Has Secretary Kerry asked the UN to take matters into their hands and send inspectors to Panama? No, nothing has happened. And uh, what's interesting about this, that the Cuban regime ploy with North Korea, is that if they thought that these were just obsolete small arms, which is total fabrication, why did they hide them 
under tons of sugar. So they were hiding the cargo. These were illicit arms. It goes against the UN Security Council resolutions and the Panamanian authorities stopped the ship because they thought they were carrying narcotics. Little did they think that, that, that they would be uh, uh, arms to be used in, in a war. And what about, what are this defensive arms? Who is attacking Cuba? Nobody's storming Cuba to attack it, except a lot of tourists from, uh, from Europe and Mexico. So they don't need defensive arms. And to say that they're obsolete, they're from the last century. Hey, that was 13 years ago. It's not that long ago. They're not obsolete. And uh, they were violating sanctions, and they should be sanctioned. The U.S. and Cuba resumed migration talks Wednesday despite this North Korea-Cuba missile event. Is it a mistake for the Obama administration to cozy up to Cuba, especially in light of this? It's just unbelievable that the very week that it is uncovered that Cuba is violating UN human rights, uh, I mean, the UN Security Council resolutions, and North Korea, of course, is doing it as well. What does the United States do? They reward the Castro regime by sitting down and talking about migration talks. And in fact, they congratulate the Cuban regime for safe and orderly migration. This is unbelievable. I think out of, out of this case with the North Korean ship, uh, the, uh, the Obama administration might be congratulating the Cuban regime for a safe and orderly uh, passage of uh, transportation of, of arms uh, to uh, North Korea. Who knows? They're looking to reward the Castro regime for anything. This is not the time for normal niceties. This is a time to get tough on our enemies. These guys are uh, uh, state sponsors of terrorism, and North Korea should be put back on that list of state sponsors of terrorism. Turning to the Mideast now, President Obama is said to be considering using force in Syria. Should the U.S. intervene with military forces or implement a no-fly zone there? And is Syria a U.S. national security interest? I don't believe that, uh, that the United States should get militarily involved in, in Syria. Yes, it's a horrid situation. It's a humanitarian crisis. But there are a lot of countries in this world. We are one country. Why is it always up to the United States to take these tasks and then have these other countries say they'll help us and at the end they don't want to do the job? What we should do is uh, pressure countries like Russia. The Obama administration says that he's Mr. Diplomat. Well, what are we doing with Russia? Russia continues to send arms to Assad, and then Assad uses them to kill his own people. Let's use what leverage we have over Russia and tell them to stop that. And China as well is helping Russia to then aid the, the Syria a government. This is a dastardly a regime that kills its own people. I don't favor sending arms to the rebels because these arms end up with any, in anyone's hands. We saw that in Libya. What happened in Benghazi? These folks that we trusted with our security uh, and then four Americans uh, end up being killed. And uh, it's time to stop giving arms away to people who we can't rely on 100%. So no, there's no military role for the United States. Is there mil there's a role for other countries to get involved and help that situation. To Egypt now, the Obama administration is said to be reviewing U.S. aid to Egypt after the recent military action there that ousted Mohamed Morsi. In your view, was this a coup and should the U.S. continue sending aid to Egypt? The U.S. should not be sending aid to Egypt. This is uh, it, it, when Morsi took over. He promised a lot to the people of Egypt. He did not fulfill any promises, and he harassed and intimidated Christians. He harassed and intimidated opposition and human rights activists. My goodness, he he tried American citizens, non-government organization individuals who are there to build up Egyptian civil society. Sixteen Americans were sentenced by the Egyptian courts uh, just for helping out a civil society. And that government we're gonna send money to, we shouldn't have sent it before when Morsi was in power. We certainly shouldn't send it now when we don't know what's going to happen with Morsi, what's going to happen with Mubarak, who we threw under the bus, and who the next government is. But still, the Obama administration is pushing not millions, but billions of your dollars. The viewers need to know that the Obama plan is to send over a billion dollars to Egypt when we don't know who's ruling Egypt and we don't know who'll be there tomorrow. It's a mistake. We should cut off aid. Representative Ross Layton, and there are conflicting reports about a possible breakthrough being imminent in U.S. efforts to persuade both sides of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict to return to the negotiating table. The president recently urged Israeli President Netanyahu to stick with talks 
But given reports of a strained U.S.-Israel relationship, can Israel expect the Obama administration to be a fair middleman, if you will? I don't. I think it's so wrongheaded for the president to be uh, uh, putting his attention on trying to broker peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. First of all, the Israelis have always wanted peace. Uh, they want to negotiate, but they don't have a true partner for peace. What we've seen is a corrupt Palestinian Authority government where we don't know where our tax dollars have gone. There's no transparency. There's no accountability. So it's up to uh, the Palestinians to say, yes, we want peace. We're going to negotiate with uh, Israel. It is not up to the United States to further induce the Palestinians with our tax dollars to get them to negotiate to a peace treaty with Israel. And with all of the problems that are going on in the world, for the administration to keep sending Secretary Kerry there once and again and again, while the world is just blowing up, is just wrongheaded and misguided. Last question for you, Representative. Um, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. nominee, Samantha Power, should she be confirmed by the Senate? Well, I'm looking forward to a very hearty debate in the Senate. Unfortunately, we have little to say about it here in the House. She has made some statements that some question about her, uh, uh, her feelings about the, uh, the Middle East uh, situation. And uh, I think that we've got great people on that committee. We've got Marco Rubio and, and Bob Menendez. They're going to ask the tough questions to make sure that we have a, a leader who's going to, first of all, reform this corrupt United Nations bureaucracy. We're sending millions of dollars to this agency. What are we getting for it? We are part of the UN Human Rights Council. And what does that council do? Pass resolution after resolution condemning Israel. And no word about Assad or anybody else who's committing human rights abuses. So is Samantha Powers going to be the person who's going to stand up to the UN bullies, to these dictators, and, and, uh, and say enough is enough. We stand for democracy, human rights, and we stand for the rule of law. And I hope that she's up to the task because it's an important position that has been badly used by, uh, by previous uh, nominees to that post. All right. Representative Ileana Rusling. Thank you, As Kathleen. always, good to see you. Thanks for joining thank us Thank you today. so much, and thanks to Newsmax. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.